Okay, so vertex, um, there's two ways to find it. The way in my math lab is they're asking you to complete the square. So with a quadratic equation, you have a standard form of quadratic equation, and it looks like this. AX squared plus BX plus C. That's standard form. It's, um, it's how most people see a quadratic equation. Uh, X squared is what identifies it as a quadratic. Um, but then there's another format called the vertex format. And that one is A times X minus H squared plus K. So the H and the K are really important. That is your vertex. The H represents the X value and the K represents the Y value. And that, those are, it's the same thing. If I were to multiply all this out, I would end up getting a standard form quadratic. Now, in my math lab, it asks you to find the vertex uh, by completing the square. I'm going to show you another easier format to use, um, and uh, I think it'll, it'll make more sense. I will show you the, the completing the square just because that's how my math lab uses it. But the vertex formula works really nicely. So the vertex formula you use when you have a standard form um, quadratic, okay? when it's in the, the standard format. So the vertex formula, you find your x value of the vertex by using negative b divided by 2a. You find the y value when you plug the x value back in. Okay, so remember, functional notation, that's all this means. I'm going to take my x value and I'm going to plug it into the function and find out what my y value is. So let me give you an example. So let's say you have a function of the form um, x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay? x squared minus 3x plus 2. <clears throat> I'm going to do this so I can factor it easily. Okay, there we go. This one I can factor a little bit easier. Okay, so vertex formula. The A is the number in front of your x squared. The B is the number in front of your x term, and the c is the constant. Okay, that's where a, b, and c come from. a is 1, b is negative 3, and c is negative 10. So I'm going to write this out so you can see it. Because what I want you to notice is there's no x's in here, right? All we're using is the coefficients, the number in front of the variables, okay? So when I use the vertex formula to get my x value, I'm going to do negative b, so negative, and b is negative 3, divided by 2 times a is 1. So I have 3 over 2. That is the x value of my vertex, OK? So now, based on the vertex formula, in order to get y, I'm going to take the number that I just got, and I'm going to plug it back into my original function. So I'm going to take 3 halves, and I'm going to plug it right into this function. Now, I did this so that I would end up with a fraction. So you can see that it really is not that big of a deal. I can change this fraction to 1 and a half if I want. This is a nice solid fraction. It ends. It doesn't uh, repeat, so I can use it as a fraction or I can use it as a decimal. So 3 halves squared, here's why I like leaving it as a fraction. Look, 3 halves squared is, is 3 halves times 3 halves. So 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 halves, this is like 3 over 1, so 3 times 3 is 9, 1 times 2 is 2, and then minus 10. So now I have to get a common denominator, right? Not so bad. So my denominator is going to be 4. So I have 9 fourths minus 18 fourths minus 40 fourths. Okay? Each of these can be reduced back to here. Here's how I did this. I know that 4 is my common denominator. 2 goes into 4 twice. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 9 is 18. 
4 is my denominator. 4 times negative 10 is negative 40. So negative 40 over 4 is negative 10, and there's my common denominator. So now 9 minus 18 is negative 9. Negative 9 minus 40 is negative 49 fourths. So my vertex is at 3 halves and negative 49 fourths. Okay, now, does that mean anything to you? Well, yeah, it does. It's, it's the point that is either the maximum or the minimum. That's the point where my parabola is either going to have the highest point or the lowest point. How do I know? Well, when you look at your function and you look at this first x squared term, if this first x squared term is positive, I have a parabola that's happy. It looks, it's a, it's a smile. It opens up. If this first term is negative, I have a parabola that's sad. It's got a frown, okay? So if my first term is positive, I have a minimum. If my first term is negative, I have a maximum.